Talk about the recording of the Sane Asylum because, uh, like I said earlier, we were in recording my first record, my first record, period, with right, Exodus, Pleasures right. of the Flesh, at a studio called Alpha and Omega. With Mark Sinisak. With Mark's, well, actually started out with Mark Whitaker, but oh, ended up with Mark Sinisak. Yeah. But I seen you guys in the studio now. Were you actually at Hyde Street Studios? Downstairs. That it. was downstairs because Alpha and Omega was Sandy right. Perlman owed all that from right. Blue Oyster Cult fame, you know, right. which... Which we'll get into because... Which is why we went to Hyde Street Studios. Uh, because uh, when we got our record deal, and now at this point with the record deal, we had just lost our bass player, Gino, and got Les back to do the record with us. And this was and with Combat? It was with Music for Nations. Music for Nations. Oh, that's right. Martin Hooker. Yeah, so this gives it... We'll talk about that in a minute, too. The big, whoa, all the pol politics. But uh, John Marshall was playing guitar with us. Uh -huh. And he said... And, you know, and Kirk had just... Kirk had blocked my demos in for years. It was Kirk Hammett that got me, got Blind Illusion signed. Uh -huh. You know, because of course it was on the strength of our music eventually. Right, but obviously. He kept walking it in and walking it in. And until we got rid of Dave, they never gave us any uh -huh. callback. And when I started singing, we got the callback. You know, and it was nothing against Dave. It was just something about the chemistry, you know, of what we were doing with it. We were too melodic on the vocal for how heavy the music was. And the music was melodic enough, you know. Uh -huh. You didn't have to have such a melodic right. vocal. And that's, well, that's want, Dave's style. Right. You don't want Steve Perry on the vocal, you know. You want Steve Tyler. And that was about the time where you put Heathen together anyway, right? Mm, yeah. yeah well, so it was kind of worked out for everybody. Right, right. Then, right. Well, he, he was signed before we were. Uh -huh. So now... Given this, Kirk tells me, Mark, you got to have the same faces on the stage that are on the album. You got to really get your band to just commit. Uh -huh. And so when John Marshall said, Hey, Mark, I'm going to drive up to Washington to audition for Metal, Metal Church. Church. I said, I love you, brother, but you better frickin' make it because you ain't coming back. Which you did. Because you ain't coming back. If you're Which taking you off, you know. It's, so we discussed it between Mike Minor and I, and it was like possessed. Larry Lalon was upset with Possessed, so we said, Larry, come on over. And he was like, okay. Larry says, I'll join the band as long as I get to do the solo on Death Noise on the record. <laughs> that was his thing. Said, and did he? Yes. He did. He did a great solo. Uh -huh. And I, was, I had no problem with it because I had already... Now, did he play any of the rhythm tracks or did you do all that, He did Mark? no rhythm. He did no rhythm tracks. He did the rhythm. We did go back in. Okay, so coming back to... Oh, it's okay. Whoa, 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 we, I, I, I hit him all the time. So coming back... Rick and Judy was our managers, right? Kirk's brother and uh -huh. sister-in-law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they told me that Blue Oyster Cult was making a record in San Francisco at their own studio, and they are having a guitar army on it. And I said, oh, shit. That's, whatever it costs, get us into that studio. And they said, well, that's an $85 an hour studio. But down below, we High can get Street, to Sally right. Proctor's studio. And yeah, studio yeah we took the upstairs. We, we, we paid the money and went upstairs. Ooh, yeah. What kind of great money place was that? Though. But, hey, it was but a lot. you got results. It was a lot. You Albums were great. Results. We did Pleasures and Fabulous there. You got results. Great. Yes, it was great. Both records were great. Yeah. Yes, and I liked the studio. And I got along with Sandy Perlman, who produced all of the great Blue Oyster yes. Cult very well. You know, and, I, yes. I mean, and he was really good to us. Oh, so it was great amazing. being in the atmosphere. I remember being in the rec room with the pool table i would we would all meet in there because you guys were below and we were at the top and we would <laughs> go down there and we would be like hey, hey let me come up and listen to your show okay we're gonna come down and listen to your shit you know what I mean? yeah. it was kind of back and forth yeah you know i used to show up at that studio with friends of mine on just an off day and just just walk through the door and go sit in the pool room right and just smoke some weed and drink some <laughs> beer and whoever's coming through recording that day got to see us you know now, the record the record didn't get released until 88 right 88 so and here you we had, are you had pra you had a record it. it was 87, right? Yeah, early 87. Right? It was yeah, 87, right? So about around April, so, May. So what goes on is, first of all, we <clears throat> signed with the Europeans, and we Combat was upset works. with that. Yeah, sure. So it comes to the we'll, we'll jump import. forward to that with the really hard times with that in a minute, but let's go talk about the good stuff. So here we are. Kirk Hammett is going to produce the record. That was the deal that, that was made with Music for Nations. Kirk Hammett produced that record all the way up until the last two days of recording. He had to go do some Metallica stuff. Is he on the record as credit in as producer? He's not credited because before the record came out, Minch and Bernstein. Oh, yeah. Don't even mention the Bernstein Bears. I get nutted up. Minch and Bernstein, his lawyer team and management, says... 
Well, in order to put Kirk's name on the record, you have to give us 10000 in our pocket. And we had already spent all our money. Yeah, right. Well, we're going to give you 10000 just so, to put his yeah, name Yeah, and so the record company was upset with us because now Kirk's na- name is not on it. Right. And we had actually paid him to produce it, which is cool, though. We got what we needed out of him. You know, right. he made sure that we got some good foundation. Now, because I had never done an album. I mean, I'd, I'd done some crazy stuff in the studio, but I didn't really know how we should go about it and he helped with that process all the way up to telling me to keep it under 42 minutes long Uh you know i mean he really did a great job i mean the the stuff on me every solo that i did i look at him he go i go okay i do it again I like, and he goes, mm. I do it again. He goes, he's jumping up and down. And I was like, man, I don't, that was sloppy or something. I, you really want that? Was, yeah, that was the one. And listening back, it was like, yeah. yeah. I always have to have a sounding board. Doug does that for me now, you know. I don't know what's good anymore. You know, I mean, I think I do sometimes. I know when I finished the solo on Vengeance is Mine, I said, well, that was it, and I'm not doing another one <laughs> on this one, you know, this last one. But uh, coming back to the studio, so we had to lay down the, the drum tracks, right? So I went in with Mike Miner, and this is how we'd been rehearsing anyways. So Mike Miner and I, who re- actually, Mike should have got more credit for the writing on some of that stuff, Vicious Visions and Metamorphosis, because uh-huh. he and I were really working all that stuff out together, just uh-huh. he and I, you know. And uh, we did the drum tracks, and then Les went in and did his bass, and then I did a massive guitars here and there and I used some of so you guitars really, so on it. it was really only the three of you that played on it and then Larry did one solo Larry right? did the solo on he did a solo on Vengeance is Mine he did the war sound the <laughs> and I left the studio when they did that him and Kirk produced that whole uh-huh. weird military sound and uh, but he played a solo on Death Noise he played a solo on Smash the Crystal he played a solo on Vicious Visions, and was that it? I hate to not credit him when where credit is due. I think that was it. Did was there any touring for this, Mark? When, yes. when you, what did yes. you guys do? Talk about we, the touring you did. We did a couple of shoestring budget tours. That's the, what happens on the first record. They're yeah, called. Man. They're all. Everybody does them on the East Coast. With usually on the East Coast. Yeah, with Hallow's Eve. I remember those guys out of Atlanta and at War. I don't remember that. They are know. still around. Really? At you, war? You go looking at some of these festivals in the United States, they're playing them. You know, really? There's like 30 bands and stuff. I'm like, there's wow, There's many on war. these festivals these days. The funny thing about the, all that was when we went on that tour, okay, Primus had just did their sausage demo. And I loved that shit, man. I was like, this is, this is my boy, you know? It felt like it was like part of my creation or something, you know, because I taught him how to play. But I didn't teach him how to play all that, you know? But, I mean, the second time when he came back into Blind Illusion, he did have to learn songs like Kamikaze, and he wasn't ready Now, did he it. stay with you guys, or once Primus started to go, he had to well, leave? Well, like, or... like I say, to, in the very beginning, he left to pursue the jazz, and then he came back because there was, oh, I was the only one who could play anything remotely jazz, like Jeff Beck and stuff. Right. And so the third time he came back, he had already got Primus together and was doing it, and he said he would do the Blind Illusion as long as it didn't interfere with Primus. So he got himself an understudy, Adam Gates, from Monkey Rhythm, and he taught Adam Gates all the bass lines. So when we went on the road, we're going to a radio station to do an interview, like, hey, man, Listen to this first. I give him a demo of Primus. And I really push those guys. Hey, yeah, I just, you got to hear this before I even talk to you here. And that, I just pushed him, you know. I love those guys. But uh, what was the question? <laughs> Did Les stay in the band? Yeah. Les flew home from the middle of the tour, and Adam flew out. And Adam, now I don't like to talk about drugs all the time, but Adam was on acid every night of the tour. That'd be hard to deal with. He did it. That guy wow. was a trip, man. I mean, he was he was an amazing. He's a genius, you know. He already had a publishing deal before he had a record deal. I mean, it was like they gave him all kinds of money because he wrote all these great songs. The band that he was in was Monkey Rhythm, and I don't think they really ever went anywhere. Uh-huh. He was actually Bob Cock, eventually. If you ever saw Bob Cock in the Yellow Sock, that was when Les would go out and do his thing. No. Weird stuff, you no. know. But anyways. Not much into the weird thing. Yeah, me either. No question. You were talking about um, Adam having to come back oh, out. Yeah, Adam and, and 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 and, uh, and Les having to fly back out. Yeah. But then he, he wasn't he wasn't returning after that, was he? No. Mark? He was, no. That was it because Primus kind of took off for a little yeah. bit after that, right? When we got back from the tour, 
Les called me up and says, hey, Crammy, uh, you know, uh, Larry is guitar player for Primus now. Todd quit, and Larry's the guitar player for Primus now. So he's not going to be playing for Blind Illusion anymore, but I still want to play on the records, and I just don't want to go on the road. I said, snap, I love you, man, but, you know, I, I can't put some guy out there struggling with a smell in my feet for, you know, six to nine months he's out of the not, year. He's not on the record. And then he's that's not, not on the record, right. that's not you know. Right. I mean, Kirk I taught me that from the gate. Well, I agree. You know? It's a band. Yeah. It means a band. So I said, so you need to do Primus anyways, or it's not going to take off. And what off. year was this about now, Mark? Is this 88 still? or is this 89. It's 89 now. Yeah, and we had already went back into Alpha and Omega because when I did that, work which we'll probably discuss in a minute when i did all that work with blue oyster cult i played in their studio 40 working guitar playing hours uh -huh. to get the seven minutes or whatever that i'm on i mean i played on i am the one you warned me of uh -huh. joe satriani is the rhythm on the left i'm the rhythm on the right and i played there's a couple of lead ditties in the beginning that was like Jack Secret or uh -huh. Kevin Carlson or somebody or Aldo Nova, but I played the solo in the middle and I played the solo at the end. Uh -huh. And I actually played on Larry's, uh, his white Fender Stratocaster really? on that one. So there's a little bang on I Am The One You Warned Me Of. Uh -huh. And for the solo, funny thing was, was that was the second song I played on and the first song was In the Presence of Another World. Okay. Sandy, Anne Maria, you might have met her, Anne Maria yes, Scott, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. She was Mark's intersex girlfriend, yes. right? Yeah, I knew Maria well. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> this was eons ago. Woo. He's probably married to another person with kids way, are, with way far kids and gone. old and gone. You kidding yes. me? Yes. So, um, my kids are already old and gone. So, okay. Anne Maria says to me, she says, Hey, Sandy Perlman wants to know, can he come in and meet you guys and have a listen? And I was like, What do you mean he asked? you yeah like i can just walk through the walls yeah, man right? what are you talking about back in those days like, man he was heavy hitter uti man heavy you hitter freaking uh cities on flame man yeah. you know i mean i watched blue oyster cold at the day on the greens oh, all boy, those come years. on and <laughs> and 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 i mean so, so seriously when i was 14 and was first heard black sabbath i wouldn't listen to anything but black sabbath that was it until I discovered Boys to Cult. I mean, I stopped listening to remember Rainbow. They went to the, remember Brilliant. they went to the clubs as soft white underbelly? Right, right, right. Because I, they were so huge. They were huge. They couldn't play a clubs, so they had to go in as... You'd yeah. see it every once in a while. You'd see at the at the old Waldorf, soft yeah. white underbelly. You and know what I mean? And you knew it was fucking Blue Oyster Cult. It would be... The tickets would be gone before... Insane. You know, yeah, yeah, it was great. That was the day, though. That was so the day. So I would sit in my room and play with Paranoid... You know, with my Les Paul and my Marshall. And then I'd put on the Some Enchanted Evening, and I couldn't figure those songs out hardly. As like, because I'd start to get it, and I'd be like, but there's something different in there. That's because they had keyboards and two guitars, you know, as opposed to a bass and a guitar. So I'm noodling my way around this all the time, every day, you know, playing, playing, and playing. And I got to the point where I would play all the in between leads during the vocals. Like, he'd be singing, and I'd just go, wah, nah, 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 nah. I'm listening. And then, between, in, in between the Buck Dharma yeah, solos, you know what I mean? In between the solos, I, when Buck Dharma was soloing, I would stop. <laughs> I wouldn't even play rhythm. I'd stop and listen. And then when he was through, I would try to emulate him during the other parts, during the breaks. Go, go, Godzilla. So the funny thing was, is on the album, I ended up taking all the solos and they played all the in-between parts. Really? Yes. How cool. I played the main solos on the I Am The One You Warned nice. Me Of. Nice. I played the solo on In The Presence Of Another World. Sandy came in. We were mixing Metamorphosis Of A Monster and he goes, well, wow, this is great. This is amazing. Can you come up and listen to what I'm doing? I said, oh, yes, please. I was thought you'd never ask. So I get up there and I literally sit on my hands. This is my deal. You cannot have these hands. They're not worthy. Till I heard what he had laid down. I said, oh, wait a second. Who played the lead on that? He says, it doesn't matter. He played me a song. I am uh, in the presence of another world. And the, at the end, it says, your master is a monster. Your master is a monster. And I was like, wow, we're doing metamorphosis of a monster up here. It's kind of trippy, you know, how, all this monster going on. That's cool. But who played the solo on that? He goes, it doesn't matter who played the solo on. I've got five different guitar players playing the solos on this one. It still isn't right. I said, he goes, you want to take a whack at it? I said, man, check it out, Sandy. I just want to ask you before I answer this. What is Joe Satriani playing on your album for? I said, man, that guy's, he's of his own ilk. I mean, when I think of Blue Oyster Colt, Buck Dharma is one of the greatest guitar players in the world. Yeah. 
do I want to play on this? Is Joe on the record? He says, yeah. I says, I want to play on it with Joe, too. <laughs> yes, I do. So I played the solo on that song. And, I mean, it was, like, amazing. I had never worked with a producer before. And he's just sitting Well, there. he's the real deal. He's, he's produced hits. I'm just like, okay. I <laughs> Don't mean, fear the Reaper. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Man, I mean dude. He's, you know. Dude, he's Sandy totally. Perlman. We I mean, felt the same way. When we were in the studio, we were like, there's Sandy. He'd come, hey, guys. Hey, we're like, there's Sandy. There's Sandy. <laughs> he got the little hat on. Can we take a look? Yeah, the little, you know, exactly. You little can't really little, see his eyes. Little every, short, you know, like, he oh, doesn't oh. even look like anything like you would no, think that he's looking like, a, you know, come in real quiet. He coined the term heavy metal, right? You know, I, well, I, what I, they I don't, say. Is that really? I didn't know yes. that. that. He was the one who heard it in the song, right, by Steppenwolf. And he said, well, that's a kind of music. Really? Yes. Wow, so you learn something every so, day. Uh, I so Sandy that. says to me up there, he goes, well, Mark, you know, he, there he is, we're in, the, we're in the studio now. And I'm like, I'm meticulously tuning after every take. I mean, and he goes, he looks at Paul Mandel, the engineer, he goes, wow. It's like, this kid has, like, he was spoon-fed by us or something. I was like, he was like, what? He goes, well, your actions are exactly what we make the band do. And they are always, half of what Blue Oyster Cult has done on the record that I love is out of tune, is what he said. Right. And I said, oh, my God. You know, so I'm tuning and tuning and tuning. And basically, I mean, they, I said, how do you want my sound? He goes, go out there and get your sound. I was like, Whoa. So I went out there with, my, with the boogie, and I got the sound real loud in the room. Then I came into the engineer's room. They had me, they had the cord going through here, you know. I mean, I, you guys all probably know all about that and whatever, but I had never recorded yeah. in the engineer's yeah, room. Yeah, of course. So now, now I... I never seen my guitar players out in that room. They, that's in the movies. I go out there because the vocalist right. goes out there, but the guitars all play in the, in the, right there in the console Yeah, room. but I had always done it downstairs out in the room, you yeah. know. Well, the I, amp's ooh, out there, but not the playing, come, you know. Ooh. I don't even, I, well, I, even when I did the Legacy demo, yeah. I don't remember Eric or Alex being um, um, out in the room. They were in the console with Doug and Muka when yeah. they did it. So I, I guess that was something like when you watched a movie, you'd see the band all right. in the fucking thing. And it's like, uh, well, maybe they do that. I don't. I, I would think if they're playing, they're making noise where the amp is, and that's making noise. So I would think that that... Doesn't make sense. So, but, um, yeah, so here I am about on my 30th take, right? And now I'm because like, because you wanted to do 30 takes or because Sandy like, Perlman I, had you do 30 takes? Because he wanted me to get smoking hot. Yeah. He had me play for two hours. No, I'm not a big take guy. Oh, after five, either. after Dude. four or five, you better get it because Dude. I, and I, I, I was, that's why I go prepared. I don't lie. I'm not a take guy. You know, you know, those, those low, the doors, when you're coming in the doors, I would jump up and kick those doors. I would, I would get in between them. I just, I mean, it was driving me crazy. Damn. Damn. Sorry. But it was amazing when he was done, when he got me to where he thought it was good. I was like, yeah, that was the one. Right. And he goes, yeah. And then he tells Paul, save that one and everything else. To the cosmos, two hours of guitar playing. Wow! To the cosmos, it was amazing. Now, how much time was this? Because you said you're in there doing the second Blind Illusion record. We now, were downstairs you... from noon to eight, and upstairs from midnight to four. Hmm. Gee, I wonder. Gee, Mark, I'm not going to ask how that was accomplished because I know how it was <laughs> back in those days. So we'll just skip over that part. Actually, for you, you young viewers, to at tell home. you guys the God's honest truth, <laughs> no, I, no, Mark, I no may have to... helped to invent speed metal, but I only smoked pot during the whole okay, time. Well, some of us, the, some of the so, rest of us, were worked those. Uh, what, what do you call it? burning the candle at both? I ends. was, I was eating. You remember and, the, uh, remember the sugar in the raw that they had upstairs? Ugh. Remember that crap? Yeah, well, I know. It, I was is. eating that stuff, like, you know, and, and Sandy was amazed. He goes, Mark, you eat just like John McLaughlin. Ugh. I said, what? He goes, yeah, John McLaughlin had all kinds of cupcakes and sweets in the studio. Some people like that. So to, um, now, so, how long more did you go with so, that? So I also played the lead on the siege and investiture of Baron von Frankenstein's castle at Vassyria. And I would have to say that is some of my most elegant guitar playing. But... On this particular one, now Sandy said he didn't, but I caught them taking my solos and making a composite of it, and they taught me how to phrase, man. You know, here I am, I come out and I play you solo. And it's great, okay, but Sandy would have done it backwards. He would have said, do that, and then come in with whatever. So they were actually taking 
on one of the songs, I don't know, I think it was this one, they took the intro, the intro from one solo, the next four bars from another solo, the next four bars, and they pieced it all together. And when he called me up, that was on Frankenstein, right? The solo was kind of pieced together, and I thought about it later. I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Frankenstein was all pieced together, right? He played me the solo, and I said, that wasn't me. <laughs> and he goes, no, that was you. But a lot of things are... They were, those are my licks. There's a lot of leads that are done like that. Those are my I mean? licks, but I didn't play them in that order, and it was amazing. And I told him, he called me one day, and I, there I am in my underwear in Richmond smoking a roach, and it's 7 in the morning, he calls me up. I'm Ock. This is Sandy. And I said, oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, what's going on? He goes, I just want to tell you, I sent off the Masters of Frankenstein to CBS, and it's the best guitar work I've ever done since Cities on Flame. <laughs> now, how long after you did the track did he call you and do this? Just um, a couple months. A couple months later. Yeah, but he says it's the best guitar work he's ever done, you know? and He's ever done. I know what he meant, Yeah, though, right. Because he took my Cause, pieces yeah, he and he put it where I should have well, done that's it. that's why he was And I Sandy told Perlman. him, I said, Sandy, I want to tell you something. You taught me more about guitar playing than anything else. He said, what do you mean? I says, well, you took my solo and you put it where the pieces where they should be to phrase it properly, to build it, like instead of just... To tell the story, to, basically. Yes. To do like building landscapes and then tearing them down, you know? And I just said, man, thank you so much. And that was like the last I talked to him, I think. You know? Really? <laughs> so at one point, now I got to meet Buck Dharma and... Eric Bloom, they were coming up the stairs, and I was going down, and Sandy's, they were going in to do the vocals on Les Invisibles, and so I sat outside the door while they recorded, and I held the post, like, nobody's coming through this door, nobody's going to even knock on this door, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting here, it's like, wow, there's guys But like, there. who would, you know what I mean? Come oh, on, man. you're in the studio. Dude, it's amazing, those guys were in there doing the weirdest sound and stuff, and I later, I asked Sandy, I said, hey, can I play on that song? He goes, no, it's done, it's okay. You know, did you ever play live with Bloister Cult? No, but religion? he asked me to join. He said, Mark, if I could set up a tour with Blind Illusion and Blue Oyster Cult in Germany, would you be able to play in both bands? I said, can I kick the ceiling? He says, I'll take that as a yes, because I'm always kicking the ceiling, right. you know, doing my Kung Fu. My, my guitar playing is actually inspired by Bruce Lee, you know. Amazing. And, and YC now Chong. Get back, let's get back to Blind Illusion. Oh, um, them too. Talk about... um. Now, you kind of ended the band for a little while right after oh, that, right? Oh, good God. No. It never really ended. It never ended. But you we didn't, just do, got, you we didn't got, do any norm, new music we, after well, that. Well, we did the... Me here's what happens. Okay, we got the, uh, the last song. Coming back to finish out the Sandy thing. I also played Rhythm on Magna of Illusion with, with Robbie Krieger from The Doors. So that was my main claim to fame right there, Jack. But now that, that's done. Okay. Now the albums come out simultaneously. Amazing. He has this storyline on his album where we're storming heaven with technology. But I had already written Espionage in Hell. So where I was going down into hell to overthrow the darkness, man. I was like, well, I'm in two places at the same time. Because what we did was we finished the Saint Asylum and I had 40 hours of studio credit coming to me. For every hour I worked for him, he gave me an hour of uh -huh. studio time free. And that was 40 hours, and that mixed the Blind Illusion uh, album uh -huh. up in their studio, yeah, with Mark Needham working. In, and, uh, but then we went in with Paul Mandel, the uh, Blue Oyster Cult guy, and recorded the medicine show, Espionage in Hell. Now, that hasn't been um, released, No, right? sir, no, sir. And, and there's speculation that Oops. it's going to be released? It ain't never coming out. I already, You know what, as far as I'm concerned, Zetro? I released it, man. You know, it, it came out, half of it came out as the Psychedelic Symphony, right? And then when I was working just recently, when, when I got all that stuff, you know, when Harold gave me the things to mix and this, I started decided, you know, I had already decided I'm working on becoming an engineer. I gave up, okay? But uh, I did, I took John Bonham's drum tracks from the isolated drum tracks from the In Through the Outdoor album. The song was Carousel Ambra. Yeah, I know One, two, three. Well, I took it and I went, I used his drum tracks and I, I did the whole espionage in uh, hell with John really? Bonham on drums, man. Nice. You see all that? It was totally awesome. And I put on it, Posthumous Percussion Performance. 
posthumous. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, Talk so, to, let's so get let's get up there. Let's get now up there. Now it's just amazing. Talk about the lineup that you got going on oh, with gosh, you now. You know, Back in the early days, I'm sorry to keep jumping, but like I said in the beginning, it's going to go back and forth, right? When Amble Chorus and Blind Illusion played, I looked at these guys and I was like, I got this thing going with my keyboards, but I need what they've got, the two guitars going, you know? So that's why we ended up getting Brian, uh, other people, not Brian, but uh, Evan and, uh, uh-huh. and Pat Woods and uh, Larry and all those guys. But that revolved but constantly, didn't I was, it? Yeah, but I was always thinking, man, if I could get Doug Piercy and Blind Illusion, it would be cemented, you know? We had Doug in the vault recently. Oh, man, dude. I would sit there. I, I do this thing, you know, with my Kung Fu and study and all that. You got to learn how to meditate, right? So I just like, well, I'm going to meditate on this. I'm meditating on hearing my music with Ronnie James Dio singing on this song. Oh, wow, that sounds good. But here's Doug Piercy playing with me on it. And the funny thing was, was when I got Doug to the rehearsal, I told Doug, I said, Doug, I don't want to waste time with you. I want you to just play lead solo melody. Just be a violinist on top of my music. Don't worry about what it is. Just don't play one chord and you will not make a mistake. The key of the song is E minor. So he just, we go play and he's like, he's like, I don't want to play when you're soloing. I said, no, that's the best. I like it when I'm singing. You know, he, he play on that too. And so he, he immediately found a couple of zones where he could play a harmony. Like, I mean, like, not a harmony, a melody with my strong rhythm and my singing. And it was like, there he is. He's doing it. He's just doing it. He just came in and just started playing. So how long have you been playing with Doug now? Since since about six months before the first European tour. So what, three years? Uh Uh-huh. We're working on three years. Two years, right? So he's on the EP as well. Oh, yeah. He produced it. Of course he produced it. He pro- yeah, of course. Uh, of course that one that he did it. for you guys back in the day. Of course, day. exactly. The, the famous. The, that's how I knew him. Ah, man. And, you know, the funny thing was is he came into the band and he's like, Mark, get rid of those amps. I had these Marshall amps that were s- solid state and it was all I could afford, you know? But so he immediately brings in a borrowed amp for me or one of his and, you know, and all distortion box tubes and and just told me how it was done again, all over again. I was a 15 year old kid all over again. You know, who's the lineup now, Mark, who's the lineup other than Doug, Doug Piercy, myself, Tom gears on bass and Eric Sire Cruz on the drums. Eric Sire Cruz, Eric, man, Sire. You see, the reason I call him Sire is because my other band, the Ghost Kings, that I used to have a Southern rock band that actually Cliff Burton had told me we have to start a Southern rock band together because we had jammed a couple of times at Montero Bay and uh-huh. Ruthie's and we did some Southern licks. And he's like, Peter, you got the Southern licks. We got to start a Southern rock band. So when I come off the road from Metallica, I don't have to go home and eat Swanson's dinners. I can go back out on the road with you. And then he never <laughs> came back. Yeah, that's too but bad. I continued on and had my friend Scary Eric play slide guitar and so he's he's a slide guitar player so when eric cruz joined the band i said i, I, I gotta nickname you sire right now because i can't have eric and eric it's just i can't and, Ian eric. and he was okay with that so he will forever be sire and uh what's going on with you guys now you got shows yeah, lined so, up talk well, about what's going yeah, on yeah the now. show's lined up you know and i was gonna say about sire sire booked our first european tour i mean he got us out there and put blind illusion what, what was he doing before that Oh, he played in like 50 bands since uh, since Terminal Shock. Uh-huh. Remember Terminal yes, Shock? Yes, I do. Of course. So Terminal Shock was back in the heyday of the Ruthies and all that. And then he's been in massive bands since. Ray Hovestat, right? right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember Terminal Shock. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, terrible. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's I actually quit. Time. I was downhill skateboarding at the very precise moment that Ray Hovestat got in a motorcycle with the tree yeah and I fell off of my skateboard in in doing downhill skateboard and almost lost my life wow and so I never touched a skateboard after that you know I stay off the bikes too but yeah it was weird how that number came up and it was like right at the same time in the same hour well, talk about some stuff you're coming up. Tell people where they so, can get a hold of Blind Illusion. Oh man, where they can. Well, where's all your Where's stuff? all your presents I brought you today? Yeah, they're, they're, they're they're actually you out, got them put the away. Ball, the other, well, we've the other got one. shirts, stickers. Of course, are always free, but we've got shirts, and uh, we've got goddamn red rum throwing shit at me. Yeah, now. baby, we've got that's the tour for the piece in the Middle East remake shirt, 
and we've got pins. We've got wristbands. We've got... Where can you get all this stuff at? At where, Doug? Blindillusionofficial.com. Blind Illusion Blindillusionofficial. There's the yeah. disc. That's the disc. The Sane Asylum. The one so the one album. Yeah, yes, album and Dave Godfrey, Dave, Dave White is actually in there on that on the Trilogy of Terror stuff. Is he? Yes. Amazing. And that was the, the Trilogy of Terror was when Exodus first went on their first. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to be t telling you about now. But let me tell you about then, too. Exodus's first tour, because Scott Burke was the manager for me yep. and them now, too, he, they asked me to go on the road with them. So Dougie and I went on the road with Exodus on the first tour. I was throwing people off the stage, and I was taking... They had to have that. Yeah, and, uh, and, and tending to the guitars and amps and stuff, and Doug was the, the sound man and the guitar tech, and I made sure that you know everything got in on time and whatnot, but the funny thing was, was I wrote Blood Shower on that tour. Uh -huh. So I was up in Canada at the Emily's Fuck the Dog Tour house, and yeah, they had these shirts, Emily's Fuck the Dog Tour. Oh, my. And I swear, man, that was the most weirdest thing, man. But whatever. I wanted one of those shirts. Did you get one? Nah. And I never got my sleeping bag back either because Ricky wanted to sleep in my bag. Oh, God. I Ricky wanted my essence. Out of, I, I want the I Biederman. In, I wouldn't sleep in anything after Rick got Biederman's in there. Like, I want the, Ricky was like, I want the Biederman Ugh. essence. I want to give me his bag. And then, and then he sits there across the room from me and he's like, don't show me how you play it. I want to figure it out. Uh, so I'm doing blood shower. I just wrote it. And it's got this weird half step, half step thing where it changes modes in the middle of the riff. And it's something I learned from listening to classical music. You know, that's when you were talking about the lyrics not coming in and how the, yes. we're very melodic and very busy. Well, it's classical music. Right. I understand with that. With four musicians. That, I understand that. You know? I understand that. And so, that's what I, the whole idea to me when you, Say blind illusion. That's what pictures in my head is. You know, cla very heavy, very classical, very rush meets wow. Exodus meets cool. kind of like you know, cool. kind of that. We that could really sort of play thing. anything, like huh? Yeah. That sort of thing. So any what? Okay, coming now, back to now is it? Yeah, now I want to talk about. That was the best thing plan, ever. Yeah, plans for new stuff to be released. Oh yeah. Well, how about we go into the studio first? Well, okay. that's what I'm saying. We're going to go in and Are record. You? Are We're going to record there? the Awakening. That's Lucifer's Awakening. And uh, straight as the crowbar flies. Oh, as, and this man. is this is soon we're this doing is this new stuff, and we're going in probably be August. So when after are, the tour, when are people going to be looking for getting some new blind illusion yeah. material where they will be able to right? Other touch than it? this, no, no, no. Other than that, okay. I'm talking about new mm. 2019, Christmas, 2000 after Christmas, yeah, after Christmas this year, yeah, after this, this oh, year. Yeah. Full, oh yeah. Full length stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, look, I mean, you have four songs on this. It's 27 minutes long. It's like, a, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, all of the songs are like stories in themselves. It's Mark. almost an album, huh? It's uh, 27 a, minutes a on 43 EP. minutes. You make a record. You'd have two more songs. You'd have been in the pocket. But uh, oh shit, is that all? Now we talk about the tour you're going to go on. That you're going to oh, have a book. Man, we got we've got like a Daredevil Records in Europe is backing our tour. So we're going out with Fusion Bomb from Luxembourg. Uh -huh. So those guys are over there. They've been touring. They got a little bit of a draw going already, you know. And so we've been doing a couple of rounds. And so I think it's going to be really good because this time there's the big thing in all the publications, you know, oh, with, yeah, that, with our a, picture and you know. all the dates. And I'm like, whoa. How many dates are on it? Well, like eight, but we're actually playing ten shows. Playing ten shows. And we're playing two in one day at uh -huh. one point. We're going to play. Uh, That's nuts. Yeah, we're playing a festival with Uli. I love Uli. But we don't get to see Uli because really? we'll be headlining somewhere else oh, at the really? same time. Another stage. Yeah. I know how that works. Uh, it's amazing, Sometimes man. you don't get to see your heroes because you're playing at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Well, you know what? Them. You know what actually might happen is we might get to see him because he might just be there hanging, you know? Right. Because this will be the third time we played with him. Nice. We played with Uli at Wolfgang's in 85. We love, we love, to, we love to, we love uh, Uli Roth. We, all of us, oh, old school guys, love all that old school shit. Well, hey yes, man, sir. thank you for being oh, here. Good God. I love this fucking. Okay, well wait. Are we done? Or we got, oh, we got more. To... We got more music coming at you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to get to. I yeah. want to make sure that. So we're playing. Okay, we got it all right. Is that well, it? We, did we get it all? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. I just want to tell you how uh, proud. Uh, uh, 
fortunate. Well, I don't know what the Happy. word is. Happy I am to have been brought out here by you. Cause I'm glad like you, you came we're, out. We're like second cousins twice removed from the from the family tree, right? Well, because, from anybody in the barrier tree that we've put on here. Because I watched when, Exodus from day one, you know, and then when you joined the band, there you were in there. And that was three. amazing, mm-hmm. man. That was good and stuff. so, yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Awesome. So we can have you back in sometime? I would love about, to be there. Okay, as soon as you get some new material and some yes. other stuff, let us know. Tell the camera. Oh. Let us know. Leave comments and let us know. Did you see Blind Delusion back in the day? Did you oh. guys go see them? Did you see Blind Delusion back and in the day? And talk about some of that stuff. And obviously, um, subscribe to my channel, Mark. Yo, once again, oh, One amazing. last thing. Yes, talk to me. We are the wrath of the gods. <laughs> That's the new one. There you go. <laughs> How, right it? on. Oh, 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 the kick. No, no, no. Oh, shit. Oh, I thought, I thought it was over. I thought oh, I had to go. Yeah, well, you do, but we the way it ends okay. is, uh, is uh, like that. Uh, so anyway, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> be in touch. We'll be in touch with you real soon on the next episode of Zetro's Toxic Vault.